order, please, before I move on to the next item of business, could I ask the members of the public leaving the gallery to please do so quietly? Thank you. The next item of business today is the members' business debate on motion number 13954 in the name of George Adam on National Third Sector Gerfec project. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on George Adam to open the debate. Seven minutes or so, Mr Adam. Thank you, President Officer. I am only too glad to bring this debate to the Chamber today to discuss the many good third sector projects that are working currently in all our communities. Tonight we will celebrate an event in here to celebrate that work. But today it is all about the support of the National Third Sector Gerfic Project, which is a public social partnership between Bernardo Scotland, Improvement Service and Voluntary Action Scotland. And the aim of the project is to reduce inequalities for children, young people and their families by creating, nurturing and enabling partnerships within and between the third sector and statutory sectors to ensure the best use of resources. There are many examples of these organisations making a difference in all our constituencies. There are also examples of third sector organisations that have profoundly affected me personally when you see the work that they have done. Bernardo's Thread Project in Paisley is an example of this type of support, offering help and support to young mothers throughout Paisley and Renfrewshire and Inverclyde. This can be as simple as completing forms for housing or discussing health and nutrition for both mum and baby. Many young women have had this support and gained the help from the help offered. The third sector is also able to do this because, unlike statutory organisations, they are seen as a friend to the individual. They are seen as part of the solution and not part of the problem, because it can be extremely challenging for local authorities to have that type of relationship with a young mum or anyone in that position. But services that Threads offer include one-to-one -one pre tenancy and tenancy support, prenatal group work and new baby group work. pre tenancy group work is particularly good because it is not just a case of ensuring that we can get these young families housed. It is about making sure that they stay in that home and they have an opportunity to thrive within that. But the support they give is immediate and available for emergencies or other inquiries. During a visit with the Minister uh, in Paisley, we heard of how the project has managed to include all the family, including young fathers, plus grands and grandpas. My, I myself uh, have recently become a grandpa myself, presiding officer, and I remember being a young parent, because obviously you can tell I'm a young grandparent as it is, but I can remember that difficult time even then with the support I had, the decisions you had to make as a young parent and how you constantly questioned yourself on whether you were doing the right job. So I can see the value of a project for, like this uh, in uh, our area. And we all know that our first influences uh, are those of our family members. So we have to ensure that a family unit stays strong, and that's where the third sector comes in and supports families. My own confidence derives from this type of thing by being told by my parents how wonderful I was from an early age. Of course, presiding officer, married life ensured that I was told on a regular basis that I wasn't quite as perfect as mum and dad told me, but it provided me with that support to be able to be all I could be within my own life and give me that confidence to move forward. And that is something that the third sector and projects like this are trying to do with families throughout Renfrewshire. But, presiding officer, one of the other uh, projects I went to see was, I'm a great believer in actually seeing it, seeing what's happening with some of the projects. And Bernardo's asked me to a project that they've got in Pullman, where I saw firsthand the work that they do in Pullman and Corton Vale, working with young men and women uh, with their outside in project, which gives them a basis to make sure that these young men and women get an opportunity to work towards anything to with the Curriculum for Excellence, to engage with uh, youth work and to see how it can make a difference and how we can change the way they look at life and move forward. And some of the stories of the young people involved, if we'd possibly had third sector or other interventions at an earlier stage, they may not have been in these institutions because there was one young man who was there on a serious assault charge. Uh, his girlfriend was pregnant. Uh, she had been wound up by uh, one of his colleagues and he attacked the person and regretted it and ended up in a serious assault charge. But he ended up in a tragic situation where he was in there for about seven years. He had no girlfriend anymore. The girlfriend had a miscarriage and he had no child. So effectively he was locked up after a 
decision he made at that point. But he saw the value of this project and how he would have made different decisions uh, when he was out in the uh, outside world. Now, that's not to say that he would have engaged with that type of programme in the outside world, but it just shows you an example of if we could make sure that young man got him at the right stage, we might not, he might not have made, of that, made that tragic decision. And there was also a young woman who went off, her mum died, and she went off the rails and attacked a girl because she effectively just couldn't deal with the situation of her mum dying so young and uh, she had nowhere to go, no other support. So again, it shows you that if there had been a possibility of intervention out with uh, the, the actual uh, being in the institution, there could have been a difference to that young woman's life. But all the whole, the project gives these young men and women the opportunity they never had or did engage with in the outside. The services enhances their social skills and their personal development, improves the prospects of young men and women in the community be on their release. And they deal with about 1,599 uh, youth work interventions. And some of the programmes that they have, as obviously I've already mentioned, that they worked with the Curriculum for Excellence, but they also have, have an interventions that have worked particularly well and linked to specific aims of the Scottish Government strategies, including CFE and Getting It Right for Every Child. And uh, SPS is out offender outcomes. But one of the uh, projects that they have is big man peer education, anti-violence, ensuring that some of the young men that I've spoken, ab spoken about actually speak to some of the younger people that are in the institution, say to them, you know, I made that mistake. The conversation they had with me, they have with that uh, young person as well. Another one they have is it's all very peer uh, su support. And one of the things they have is Mind Your Heat, where they have emotional health and well-being programme and explore the physical, mental, emotional well-being of enabling young men and women to identify and adopt strategies to cope with stress. And in some of the cases that I've already mentioned, that would help them make the right decision at the right time. Of course, the challenges that we currently have, we have welfare reform within, uh, the, from the Westminster government, and that's having a dramatic effect on a lot of young families and uh, uh, families throughout Scotland. And one of the things that Bernardo's in the third sector are concerned with is that this effect is going to have and the lack of financial support because we all know that if you're struggling to make sure that your family has the financial backing they need, things could go wrong at that stage. So at this stage, I would like to say, presiding officer, I welcome all the work that the third sector do. And although we do live in very difficult times, we need the third sector to continue to work with the government, both locally and nationally, and along with the rest of the public sector, in providing help and support to the many families in Scotland, through no fault of their own, need that type of support. Many thanks. I now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes or so, please, and I call Ian Gray to be followed by John McAlpine. <clears throat> Thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, I give thanks to George Adam for securing this debate on what is an important topic, and we'd like to join him in commending the National Third Sector GERFIT project on the work it has already undertaken towards reducing inequalities for children, young people and their families through the creation of vital links between uh, sectors uh, and recognise uh, some uh, extremely impressive examples which Mr Adam gave uh, from his own constituency. As he said, due to the increasing budget pressures on the public sector, particularly at local government level in Scotland, it is indeed vital that we work towards supporting third sector organisations as full partners in the delivery, commissioning and planning of children's services. In my own constituency of East Lothian, Strive is the lead partner in voluntary action. It is the third sector interface for the county, and they provide uh, support, learning and development opportunities for both individuals and organisations through volunteering, organisational support, youth adventure uh, and wellbeing teams uh, as well. Uh, and members will all, I guess, know uh, from similar projects in their own constitu constituencies just how important third sector organisations are to the building of empowered and resilient communities and families. Many promote informal learning, leadership development and help build community capacity across projects. The project uh, uh, in the motion today demonstrates that partnership working has a positive impact. It's a project which has been evaluated 
and it shows exactly how uh, we see a positive impact on how services are delivered in local areas where the third sector is strong and it demonstrates the importance of partnership working uh, not as something uh, unusual or remarkable but rather as the standard practice between third sector and statutory bodies. So continuing to support the development of interfaces across Scotland will be vital as is using the resources and expertise available throughout the third sector. And these will become increasingly important as we see the dual pressures of increasing uh, legislation and sweeping cuts in welfare, public sector budgets, and indeed uh, local budgets through the council tax freeze. SCVO has said that the impact of these cuts is affecting the work of many third sector organisations uh, and indeed 63% of charities and third sector bodies in Scotland uh, forecast that they will face cuts and 81% of third sector organisations expect the financial situation for the sector to worsen uh, in coming months. But all of this of course is set against an expectation in the sector uh, of increased demand worrying not just for the organisations themselves, but the families and communities uh, like those Mr Adam referred to who rely uh, on third sector projects. Demand for support is expected to increase in coming years as GERFEC further rolls out and the Children and Young People's Act uh, comes into force too. So it is increasingly important that the Scottish Government does everything it can to support the role of the third sector across uh, Scotland. It is clear that third sector organisations have significant challenges uh, ahead of them, but it is also clear that there are better outcomes in areas where there, there are empowered, professional and adequately resourced uh, third sector organisations working in an effective partnership with councils and uh, the NHS. So they must be supported uh, as they develop those robust and efficient partnerships. The third sector must be involved on a, a, the basis of an equal playing field in the delivery of children's ser services, uh, albeit that that is an ambitious uh, aspiration given the challenges facing the sector. It is, however, something that I'm sure the whole parliament supports uh, because it is an important strand for us in delivering the best outcomes for young people, for families and for communities across Scotland. Many thanks. I now call Joan McAlpine to be followed by Cara Hilton. Um, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm going to start um, my comments today with, with something of a confession. Uh, when I was uh, elected uh, to this Parliament in 2011, I, uh, like many people, had never heard of Gurfek. And uh, if I'm honest, um, as, a journalist, as a journalist, I'm always quite suspicious of acronyms. Um, but it wasn't, I hadn't been here for very long when I became a convert, and that was due to the work of the Education Committee, in particular our inquiry into the educational attainment of looked after children, and of course the work we did in scrutinising the Children and Young People's Bill. And it became really uh, clear to me that, that GERFEC was one of these, um, it was a touchstone that people could go to, um, getting it right for every child. And it really meant something, particularly to um, the young people who um, were care leavers, for whom, you know, it hadn't gone right for them. And I think the, the principles behind getting it right for every child is that every child should be, you should want their outcomes to be the same as you want for your own children. Um, and I think for everybody to, who's involved in children and for policymakers to understand what that means is really important. And I have to say, I even became... I even became persuaded by Shanari as well, uh, the eight indicators of well-being, which are safe, healthy, achieving, nurtured, active, respected, responsible and included. And again, I think it's really important that people have those touchstones to go back to and, and say, are our policies, the way we're doing things, going to deliver these outcomes for children? And I, during the course of both the inquiry and scrutinising the bill, it became very clear to me that it was third sector organisations who were some of the most powerful advocates uh, for GERFIC. Um, one of them was Bernardo's, whose briefing today uh, is very useful. Um, it's really clear that third sector organisations have uh, become far more central to uh, designing and delivering policy in my own area in Dumfries and Galloway, the third sector interface, um, 
third sector in Friesen Galway now has a, a shop front project on the high street. And so it's, it's really very accessible and it is becoming recognised as being central to the delivery of services. And I think that's um, what this project, um, as I understand it, is about. Um, it's a pilot project um, to encourage um, the third sector to be involved in designing services which deliver GERFEC um, um, right across um, Scotland. Um, it's obvious that the way that we're integrating services, not just for children, but we're talking about children today, um, is, a, is a very complex affair. Um, the top-down approach of old, where the local authority or the health board made all the decisions and designs and the delivery of service, did have the benefit of simplicity, but of course it's not flexible. And if you want a person-centred approach, um, where services are tailored to the needs of the individual, um, then the third, se the third sector has to be at the heart of that. And George Adam uh, outlined what a transformative experience that can be um, on the ground for young people. Um, the pilot um, looks at ways how you can improve all the different parties involved in delivering GERFEC and how you can improve their communication. And it strikes me as an excellent way to deliver good practice in the area. Um, under, as I understand it, 10 community planning projects are working on this and they're looking at ways to strengthen their partnerships with the third sector. Um, and they have a self-evaluation checklist which ensures that GERFEC informs the collaborative working they do every step of the way. Um, as I understand it, self-evaluation, perhaps not surprisingly, throws up challenges, not least the pressure on resources uh, caused by austerity, as outlined by Ian Gray, and the increasing pressure um, on third sector interfaces um, to uh, coordinate so many very different uh, third sector organisations, uh, both large and small. But the point of the project is to offer solutions and then to share those solutions um, right around Scotland, um, which I think is a, is a really admirable idea. Um, going forward, I understand that we are halfway through this project and the last part of the project will be actually to uh, discuss with service users how it's working and how they would improve uh, matters. And again, my experience on the Education Committee told me that one of the most important aspects of um, the Children and Young People's Act and, um, and our inquiries was when we sat down and spoke to look after children and got their views and used them to help us uh, influence and shape policy. Um, because it's service users, children and young people themselves, that are uh, at the heart of uh, GERFEC. And that's why I'm very pleased that this project is going to, in its next stage, listen to them and share their views uh, right around Scotland. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Now I call Cara Hilton to be followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by congratulating George Adam on securing today's debate and also by apologising for not being able to stay um, after my speech because I'm sponsoring an event on behalf of a constituent at one o'clock. Uh, George Adam has already highlighted that the aim of the National Third Sector Getting It Right for Every Child project is to reduce inequalities for children, young people and their families by creating, nurturing and enabling a partnership approach between the third and statutory sector. And in Dunfermline and right across Scotland, this innovative approach is already delivering results and playing a real life-changing role for many families. In Fife, we've seen the development of the South West Family Nurture Hub, which brings together third sector agencies to design and deliver services for parents and families of not to three-year-olds, with a particular focus on the most vulnerable families. Key to this project has been a focus on developing early language skills, on improving attachment, providing support, information and advice to mums and dads, including one-to-one -one specialist family support and intensive interventions, all geared towards breaking the cycle of disadvantage in our communities that too many kids are caught up in. The hub involves Granados, Fife Council, Aberlour, Fife Gingerbread, Early Years Scotland and Homestar, all working in partnership to provide early targeted and intensive support and ensuring that those families with extra needs can access the right intervention and support services in a non-stigmatised way, receiving as little as, or as much support as they need. I had the pleasure of recently visiting the Bernardo's project in Kirkcaldy to meet partners involved in the Nurture Hub and find out more about the key services that they offer, such as the Family Carer Service, which provides extra support to vulnerable women in pregnancy and after birth. 
helping build parents' practical knowledge of nutrition, communication and attachment with direct input from the Speech and Language Service and the Dietitian Service. And in this, I've also had the pleasure of visiting the, the fantastic Bernardo's Threads project in Paisley, highlighted by George Adam. And in this context, we can clearly see the benefits being delivered by following a public social partnership approach, increasing the focus on tackling inequalities and delivering a genuine shift in focus to early intervention and prevention. It's always good, I think, to see the first-hand policy aspirations that we debate here in the Chamber being translated into real action on the ground and to see the barriers between organisations and sectors being broken down. And that's why it's absolutely vital that both the Scottish Government and local authorities continue to provide the support and the resources to make this happen. In this respect, Bernardos have highlighted their concern that a great deal more work and support is needed to help third sector interfaces be full and effective partners in the delivery of children's services. There's currently quite a big variation in their ability to be a representative voice for the third sector in community planning partnerships. And so given the, the requirements of both the Children and Young People's Act and the Community Empowerment Act, I think more work's got to be done here to ensure a better support network. And that's especially the case for smaller organisations that obviously have got a key role to play in implementing GERFIC and de designing children's services. The reality is that unless the third sector are really involved in the planning of children's services, it's going to be extremely hard to make sure those services are designed in a way that meets people's needs. And this is especially the case for those who face the greatest difficulties. Uh, members have highlighted the environment that we're in and the climate of diminishing resources and increasing needs. And both the public and voluntary sectors are increasingly having to deal with children and families in crisis. We can only address this is issue in partnership. We must do all we can to make the Children and Young People's Act work, but this will be challenging unless there's a genuine partnership between local authorities and the voluntary sector, and it's not always something that's just central government-led. Moving on quickly to the, well, the wider context of the motion, George Adam is right to highlight the impact of the Tory welfare cuts on children and families across Scotland and the possible knock-on effect in the, in the third sector, and obviously local authority cuts are going to have an impact here too. We live in a country where not only food banks but clothing banks are springing up in our towns and cities and that's why we must do everything we can to protect children in Scotland from the Tories' austerity regime. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, we all want to see a Scotland in which every child has the opportunity and support to fulfil their potential and if we're to achieve this goal and the best outcomes for all our children and young people, partnership working between the third sector and the public sector is vital. The third sector, GERFIC, is a great example of where we are starting to get this right and all involved in supporting our children children must focus on working together effectively to ensure that every single child in Scotland has the best start in life and an equal opportunity to succeed. Many thanks. I now call David Torrens. Thank you, President Officer. I would also like to congratulate George Adam on bringing this motion to Parliament today. I consider the national third sector, getting it right for every child, perfect project an excellent framework to support each and every child and their families. In fact, the project represents a consistent way for all involved to work with children and young people in Scotland. I particularly welcome this project as it recognises not only the support needs, but also the wishes and interests of children and young people. What does this mean in practice? We first behind the project is to engage with children in the decisions which affect them. It aims to actively involve children in the decision-making process and to help them understand the reason behind decisions taken which will impact on their lives. This involves listening to their wishes, but actively engaging with them in the discussions that will affect them most. Overall, the project seeks to streamline responses from professionals and improve the coordination between all stakeholders. In this respect, the Named Person Scheme has been introduced. I particularly welcome this aspect of the project, as it makes sure that every child or a parent has a single point of contact to guide them and provide advice when necessary. Why are these steps important? First of all, I believe that these measures will help in enabling children and young adults, as well as their families, in feeling better supported and more confident about the help they receive. Secondly, by achieving this, they will be able to ensure that all children feel safe, supported and cared for through their childhood. Scotland is a great place to grow up, but we simply cannot forget that child poverty, social inequalities and deprivation remain core challenges to achieving a more equal and fairer society. Getting it right for every child this also means that we need to focus on a wider range of issues. In this regard, I agree with George Adam that we need, to need a well-resourced and supported third sector. Organisations such as Bernardo Scotland, Voluntary Action Scotland and Improvement Service can be a great help in reducing inequalities. Looking at the GIRFIC project, I believe that 
this is a case and that each charities have an excellent understanding of the pressing needs of children and families faced on a daily basis. In recognising this, one of the main aims the National Griffith Project is to strengthen the involvement of the third sector in community planning. The project states, and I quote, it is essential that the third sector is a full partner in planning, design and delivery of children's services. Getting it right for every child, as I have outlined earlier, requires a focus on the interests of children and young people. Focusing on the interests of children and young people is facilitated through a public social partnership between government and third sector organisations. Additionally, the project promotes the cooperation and coordination amongst organisations, as well as identifying the indicators against which activities in the sector should be measured. I truly support this approach. I am confident that it will at last improve the well-being of children and young people in Scotland. However, being cognizant to the measures proposed by UK welfare reform, working with the first sector organisations will become an even more important task. We just need to think about the tax credits, cuts, nearly 350,000 Scottish children and 200,000 families will be affected. In fact, research shows that 100,000 more Scottish children will be in poverty by 2020. If we don't succeed in counteracting the UK welfare reform, Finally, allow me to say I am confident that we can make Scotland an even better place to grow up. However, we are at a crucial junction. We need to use our new devolved powers wisely, respecting the rights and dignity of our citizens. The best way to achieve this, I believe, is by building a strong and mutually beneficial link with the first sector. The Griffith Project is an example there for creating such a partnership, which is undeniably has already benefited many children and families and communities across Scotland. Many thanks. Can I now invite Aileen Campbell to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Thank you, President Officer. And I welcome today's debate. I want to thank George Adam for bringing this important topic for discussion today. At the heart of George Adam's motion is getting it right for every child, and GERFEC is built on partnership. It's there in how services can work together better to support children and young people. It's the foundation on which professionals should work with families. And I think Joan McAlpine's point about needing to be mindful of jargon and realise what GERFEC stands for is an important one. It's about making sure that we have and work well for every child, every time. GERFEC, of course, is also the cornerstone of our belief that we should be putting our children and young people at the centre of all we do. And as recognised by David Torrance, it's our national approach to ensure that children and young people get the services that they deserve. It embeds partnership and also, and importantly, early intervention and prevention to ensure we avoid crises escalating and can secure the best possible outcomes for our children and young people. The National Third Sector GERFEC project was launched in early 2013 and the project aims to support community planning partnerships to recognise and embed the role of the third sector in implementing GERFEC, maximising the contribution the sector can make to enhancing outcomes for children and young people and to draw together these principles in policy and in good practice. Partnership is why the third sector, National Third Sector GERFEC project has been so successful at this critical stage of preparing for the new duties that will fall under the Children and Young People Act. Partnership has been the word that occurs throughout the positive evaluation of the project. And it's been an important model for the partnership that should underlie how all services are planned and delivered in the future. And along with George Adam and so many of others here today, I want to celebrate and value its success and look forward to getting an opportunity to do that again later this evening in Parliament. The third sector's role is a key plank of our Children and Young People Act to make sure we are effective in our planning of children's services. And this includes new duties on local authorities and health boards to ensure that the third sector organisations have a key role as part of that planning process. At the same time, we are introducing a new programme to improve how partnership will deliver better services for children and young people in each local area. Public, third sector and private organisations must work more effectively in partnership with communities and with each other to design and deliver excellent public services for local people. Also, we want to make sure that... Um, oh, sorry, I thought... <laughs> I apologise, I thought there was an intervention. I thought... Ian was going to intervene there, I apologise, sorry. <laughs> this is where the Realigning uh, Children's Services Programme will add value to what is already taking place across community planning partnerships. 
The programme will support local partners to accelerate the implementation of GERFIC and help meet the needs of our vulnerable children much sooner than we currently do as a nation. And last night in Parliament, we celebrated Action for Children's 60th anniversary. We got a chance to recognise its unstinting determination to do the best for the children in their care. It also provided a wider opportunity to recognise the fantastic work undertaken by the third sector more generally. The value of the third sector is that it is often deeply embedded in the community, understands completely the people that they are trying to help, and is fleet of foot and nimble to adapt to emerging challenges and opportunities in order to provide the help people and communities need. It does not expect people to fit around them, instead recognising the strengths and assets within a community and building on them to find lasting and sustainable solutions to the challenges they may face. In the words of our former Chief Medical Officer Harry Burns, moving our people from passive recipients of care to active agents of change in their own lives. And it's that approach and value that's been articulated by so many in this uh, debate today. Uh, George Adam mentioned the Friend Project, which builds the confidence of parents by revealing to them what they can do. He also mentioned Bernardo's Outside In Project. And I think that in itself it shows and how, how, highlights why we should be embedding early intervention and prevention, because it's those young men and women who are getting the help too late. They're getting it in the prison service. And if we had potentially managed to find earlier uh, solutions for them, they could have avoided that trauma or imprisonment. At the Violence Reduction Unit's uh, 10th anniversary celebration, I heard uh, from a young man uh, who beautifully encapsulated what we need to do to help these uh, young uh, men and women. They, he said that if young men and women have to look beyond the end of their kitchen table for a positive role model, then those people are already disadvantaged. And it's those people that we need to make sure that we can step in to uh, help, and the third sector is well placed to provide that. Ian Gray also mentioned the Strive uh, pro programme in East Lothian and talked about its importance in building resilience in the communities that he represents. Likewise, Cara Hilton mentioned the South West Family Nurture Hub, which focuses on vulnerable families, attachment and language uh, development. Uh, but George Adam and many other speakers today are also right to recognise the challenges that is often faced uh, by the third sector, because it's the third sector that is often at the coalface of trying to help families, especially in the face of harsh welfare reforms from the UK government, where sanctions and cuts are hitting our most vulnerable the hardest. Uh, and we're also seeing increasing use of food banks, which is a complete and utterly uh, unacceptable situation for our rich nation to be in. The challenge is also, therefore, uh, to the third sector. A uh, partnership sounds e easy, but it's absolutely and completely challenging. The third sector is not homogenous, but it's richly varied. This means a lot of careful work has to be put in into ensuring that there is trust, there is open relationships, and that there is positive dialogue between each and every single part of the third sector in a community. And Cara Hilton is also right to acknowledge the challenge of finding a truly representative voice of the third sector at a CPP level. And we want to support the third sector, and that's why we've committed substantial support through the Children and Young People and Families in Early Intervention Fund. And more widely, the 1516 Scottish Government budget was, has enabled us to continue investing in the third sector as a key social partner with £24.5 million of funding. And we're working closely with the sector to consider what approach might be taken in the period ahead to continue to secure a buoyant and sustainable third sector. So in conclusion, President Officer, I want to acknowledge the great work that has been done by the National Third Sector GERFEC project and by the third sector more widely. And I'd also like to take the, the opportunity to thank again George Adam and the SNP and Labour Party members who today have united in this chamber to recognise the fantastic work that's been done by the third sector in the face of what is very challenging times, but nonetheless are able to deliver fantastic results and outcomes for those who are most vulnerable in our communities. Thank you, Minister. That concludes George Adams' debate, National Third Sector GERFIC project, and I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30pm.